Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the court. I stand before you today to represent my client, Chihiro Construction, to request that you favour our position to remove the presiding arbitrator, Dr. Kozelski, from the Chihiro Construction v. Three Thugs Group Arbitral Pro Tribunal on the basis that Section 1 of the Arbitration Act 1996 has been compromised. That is, the object of arbitration is to obtain the fair, and re the fair resolution of disputes by an impartial tribunal without necessary delay or expense. As the juridical seat of the arbitration is in England and Wales, we therefore believe the Arbitration Act 1996 will befall on this case. The current arbitration proceedings between our client Chihiro Construction and the respondents, Three Thugs Group, are in regard to an insurance claim following Storm Daniel that hit a construction site in Cheshire in May this year and has affected not only my client but a number of parties involved in the dealings with the project. My client Chihiro Construction submitted an insurance claim to the respondents Three Thugs Group which was rejected. This is the foundation of the arbitration proceedings. In preparation for the arbitral hearing, the first arbitral hearing, my client learned three things which caused concern. Number one, the current presiding office arbitrator's firm, of which he is a partner, Kozalski and Partners, has a relationship with Shady Gray, the corporate company of the Three Thugs Group, the respondents. Number two, Dr. Kozalski was appointed as an arbitrator to eight other connected arbitral proceedings. And number three, Dr. Kozalski has failed to disclose circumstances at the time they became, they became apparent. In dealing with issue one, that is the relationship with the parent company, my client issued an inquiry to the presiding arbitrator requesting resignation, to which resignation was declined as Dr. Kozalski explained that he had no personal dealings or knowledge of Shady Gray or of the Three Thugs group prior to the beginning of the current series of arbitrations. Dr. Kozalski had carried out his, his law firm's conflict check systems before accepting the appointments, which did not alert him to the relationship between the respondent and the fact that the parent company was in actual fact one of the was he, was one of his own firm's most lucrative clients. My client finds this information difficult to accept, as prior to acceptance of any appointment, the expectation of the arbitrator is to take the trouble to inform himself on all matters that are relevant to the proceedings. This was listed or stated in the case law. Hello, the Secretary of State for Home Department 2008. The fact that Dr. Kozelski carried out his own firm's check, conflict check, it in itself can be construed as a conflict and would have carried, out, or carried more weight if he had completed an independent conflict check and undertaken further review of the parties. This brings me to the impartiality test as summarized by Lord Hope in the Porter and McGill case. That is, whether the fair-minded and informed observer, having considered the facts, would conclude that there was a real possibility that the tribunal was biased. Dr. Kozelski's statement of having no knowledge of Shady Gray is difficult to accept, especially based on the fact that he was a partner and that Shady Gray contributed substantial remuneration for his firm. His firm. Any reasonable man, especially one that is a partner and has his name on the company's name, would have a relatively good understanding of where his company's turnover originated from. Even if Dr. Kozalski had only just learnt Shady Gray's direct involvement in his firm, once the link was established, it is difficult to remain objective and should have been disclosed to the parties. Case law demonstrates the matter in Sierra Fishing Company v. Farum, 2015, and the court, where the court summarised the following point. 
the fair-minded observer would conclude that the connections give rise to a real possible possibility that the arbitrator would be predisposed in favour of the respondent in order to maintain the business relationship with himself, his firm and his father to the financial benefit of all three. In addition to, to that case law, the court in the case of Sphere Drake Insurance and American Reliable Insurance in 2004 concluded, whilst the, whilst the, act, whilst the lack of confidence that any party, party to the arbitration would have in such an arbitrator is not the determining factor. It is undoubtedly understandable and a fair-minded observer looking in on the matter objectively would conclude that however much Mr. Lucas tried to put out of his mind his prior conclusions and knowledge, he would become, so he would come to the matter with some preformed view which would present danger of unfairly regarding with, with favour the case of one or the other of the parties concerned. My client therefore believes that the impartiality test has failed on this occasion. In dealing with issue two, that is, Dr. Kozalski was appointed as an arbitrator to eight other connected tribunal proceedings, however failed to disclose this to the parties. This draws attention to the objective test which is disclosure should be given to should be given of circumstances which would or might affect the fair-minded and informed observer, having considered the facts to conclude that there was a real possibility that the tribunal was biased. Case law demonstrates the Court of Appeal in Amec. Capital Projects Limited versus White Friars City Estates in 2005 that summarised the learnings as follows. Failing to disclose circumstances which may result in doubts about the arbitration, uh, arbitration impartiality, the Court of Appeal found that it is a disclosure that ought to have been made, has not been made, that will mean the arbitration has not displayed the badge of impartiality that he should have. My client therefore believes the objective test has too failed on this occasion. In dealing with issue three, that is, Dr. Kozalski has failed to disclose circumstances at the time they became apparent. It is good practice for the arbitrator to disclose any links when they become aware of, of them to the parties involved in the arbitration. However, Dr. Kozalski decided to remain silent on this point in more than one circumstance. This could be due to the fact that he put himself in a position where he has a conflict between his duty to, the, to his client and his own self-income. Again, I refer you to the case law demonstrating the Court of Appeal in the Amic Capital Projects Limited and both Whitefriars City Estates Limited, which I previously mentioned in issue two. Based on the three issues presented, my client has therefore lost all confidence in the presiding arbitrator to deal properly with this reference and wishes to request the court under section 241 of the Arbitration Act 1996 to remove the arbitrator on the grounds that circumstances exist that give rise to justifiable doubts as to his impartiality. My client also intends seeking a stay to the proceedings in line with section 91 under such time until such time as a new independent arbitrator is established. I put this for, forward to the court and trust the fair and reasonable decision will be made.